Hello everybody and a very warm welcome here to the Wine with Jimmy channel here on the world of YouTube. Delighted to have you on board for this fantastically interesting Wines of Georgia multi-series looking at all the aspects of this fantastic country and we are here actually now getting into the key grape varieties of this region. So here you go, 17 parts to Wines of Georgia. We're now on part seven, looking at the key black grape variety of Saparavi. Very fascinating. We're going to go through exactly what it's like in terms of its characteristics and how it is made and how it tastes. So wonderful stuff. Now, I really want to hear from you if you have tried Saparavi, if you have tried Georgian red wine. What are your thoughts about these wines? Please put them in the comment section below this video. Make sure you click like as it helps everything here at Wine with Jimmy and click subscribe as it helps you with regular updates with all things around the wine world. So let's rock and roll talking about the fantastic Saparavi grape variety. First of all, where does one find it? Well, the key region is that classic place where most viticulture is found towards the east, and that is the Cajeti, as you see written here, and brilliant backdrop there of the Caucasus Mountains as well. Now, Saparavi originated actually in the Meshketi on the border of Turkey and then spread towards Kartli and then further east, finding its home today in the Cajeti region, where it is most widely grown. There are important PDOs, protected, protected designation of origin areas, such as uh, Muzukani, Mukuzani, sorry, and Kashmi, as well as sweet, semi-sweet areas like the Akasheni, for example. So a number of areas that produce it across, and please refer back to the location of the PDO uh, uh, part when we looked at it in previous videos, and also the specific PDOs on later videos as well. Now, there is potential being recognized with plantings outside of Georgia of this variety. I was only just recently in the Finger Lakes of New York State and trying the wonderful Constantin Frank Saparavi with their connections to Ukraine and connections to sort of Eastern Europe, the wines were absolutely wonderful. So people are starting to experiment with this variety outside of Georgia. Uh, look at local places also, Moldova, Ukraine, uh, and also even Australia as well. Uh, there is a push in Georgia to diversify red planting. So that Saparavi is the main red variety and it isn't forced to be all things for all people. Uh, so let's have a look at its grape growing characteristics. So approximately 40% of vineyards are in Cajeti Saparavi, 10% of all plantings of Georgian wine are Saparavi as well, about approximately something like seven and a half thousand hectares. It can be dry, it can be semi-sweet, it can be sweet, it can be fortified. And it's vinified in the more modern European style, where most of it is today, and still also the traditional style in Cavevri, for example. It can also be oaked with the influences um, filtering into Georgia. You'll find American, Caucasian and French, Slavonian and Hungarian types of oaks being used. The varietal character is distinctive even when mass produced. So at high volume and even small artisanal and boutique production, you'll find that you can always get an inherent characteristic of Saparavi. The wines are classed, or the grapes rather, are classed as the Tenturia variety. Uh, this means that the flesh inside the grape is colourful and pigmented. So the skins, as well as the inside, the flesh are pigmented. And the name actually comes from or translates to to colour with or to dye in Georgian because of the immense amount of colour 
that you get out of the grape flesh and the skins. So, of course, the wines tend to be inky, deeply coloured. They're often so blackish purple that there is very little transparency through them. The high malic acid that one finds in Safarabi means that malolactic fermentation or conversion must be uh, adhered to and it must be carefully monitored as well. Um, characteristics of this variety. So it is a mid budding variety. So doesn't tend to suffer with frost as much as others, but it is late ripening. So in order to get that phenolic physiological ripening of all of that pigmentation and those skins that you find in Saparabi, you're going to need a nice long season to do that. It's relatively productive, so you can find volume from this, and hence why it's been made in the past in quite large volume, certainly when the Soviet Union occupied Georgia and mass produced Saparab before their sort of semi sweet reds that filtered into the Soviet Union. It's a nice winter hardy grape, which means it can really survive quite harsh temperatures, cold temperatures, and then conversely, in summer, it is drought tolerant. So it's actually a really useful variety to rely on for all viticultural based characteristics, but then the end product as well. It is also quite clonally diverse. It has uh, at least 17 mutations or clones. There are the Saparavi uh, Budashiburi, uh, which is the Saparavi with the long berries. Now, that's normally just shortened to Budashuri, so Saparavi Budashuri. And it's often interplanted alongside with Saparavi, and it can be found to be co fermented. And it may not be named as a separate variety in Saparavi wines because some people just don't know it's there. Budashuri is a mutation of Saparavi with lighter coloured flesh and more floral. A lot of people believe that it's the more elegant expression of Saparavi. Now, the production and ageing, so it can typically be aged in new or old oak, often benefits from some bottle ageing due, of course, to its high level of tannin, its intensity of colour and flavour, and its high levels of acidity. So everything's very much turned to 11. It's very much higher notch here. So a bit of oxidation through barrel and also through bottle means that these wines gain wonderful complexity with time. Okay, key aromas of Saparavi, there you go. So key aromas, whether they're made is in a traditional sense, and that is in something like clay pots, Kvevri, or European in stainless steel or in oak, for example, will typically always show dark berries. So think of things like blackberry, dark black cherry, black plum is very typical, but also things like licorice that you've got here uh, can come through. Tobacco, chocolate, spices, violet is another character too. The wines are typically very high in tannin, very high in acid and colour, as we've discussed, and they have that real full body character. If they are the Saparavi Buddha Sherry, then they may be slightly more delicate, but still pretty full. Because of the tough skins and the high tannins, the wines do take a long time to mature, and the aromas can be linked to changes in the terroir, so they are sight sensitive. In cooler parts of Georgia, you'll find that you can get some more red berries and more elegance, where in the warmer regions and certainly the more continental warmer areas like Cajeti, you'll find darker soils further from the mountain and more black fruit and meaty characteristics with that higher alcohol. Very, very classic. Do go and try them. Even at the more affordable end, they're very interesting. And then, of course, at the very high end, the premium boutique end, they are absolutely wonderful expressions. So do try this variety, which has such historical relevance uh, in Georgia, the most planted black variety uh, and with a lot of quality behind it as well. Now, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or you'd like to get in touch just to share your experiences with Saparavi 
or Georgian wine or Georgian gastronomy, hospitality, or you've been to the country, please, please do get in touch by commenting below. Make sure you click like and subscribe. Please do join me for the next video where we talk about a selection of other great varieties that one may find from this beautiful, wonderful country. Uh, you can also get in touch with the social media that you see at the bottom of every slide. And if you do find yourself in the UK, please come and say hi for a class, a glass or a bottle, which Georgian wine at Streatham Wine House, my bar in London, lots of it. So until next time, see you again. Bye bye.